I was scrolling through my feed on Facebook a few months ago and came across a post from a guy named Chris out of Las Vegas. He had a handful of comic books that he was looking to sell, and one of them really intrigued me. Let's talk about it. I've always been a big fan of Johnny Cash, so when I saw a comic book called Hello, I'm Johnny Cash posted for sale in a Facebook group I'm part of, I had to pull the trigger. We exchanged a few messages, and before I knew it, the book was at my door. Now, a CGC 6.5 isn't something to write home about, but once I got the book, I noticed something in the top left corner that really caught my eye. A little logo that read Spire Christian Comics. Call me ignorant, but I had never heard of the concept of a Christian comic before. That the power of Christ compels you! I'm not personally a religious person, but the concept of a religious or Christian comic is very intriguing to me, and I'll tell you why. One of many things about comic book history that interests me the most is the intentional use of the comic book medium to spread propaganda. You see this a lot around World War II, throughout the Cold War, and even today, but that's for another story. Anyway, after seeing that little logo, my curiosity was at an all-time high. I went down a rabbit hole to find out more about this Spire Christian comics company, and what I found was quite intriguing. First, I managed to find a PDF of high-res scans floating around the internet, which allowed me to read the book. To my surprise, the plot of it was incredibly close to the 2005 movie Walk the Line, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon. Only it had a ton of Bible verses and was entirely fixated on convincing kids not to drink or do drugs. Here are six of my favorite panels from it. In this panel, we see a clever depiction of a downward spiral pertaining to the protagonist's relationship to alcohol. This is accentuated by the artwork moving from rich, vibrant color to more subtle and desaturated tones. This panel comes a few pages later and returns to that spiral motif, but this time showing positive growth of our character. He is literally being swept up by the music, and as the text reads, it's because he prayed and worked hard. I love this particular page. The layout is incredible. It is packed with fun details from his various trips around the world, and it demonstrates a serious skill in portraiture. In this clever three-panel narrative, we see the protagonist return to drugs, a serious moment that is accentuated through the elimination of background, the use of red, and the heavy emphasis on detail in the hands and pill bottle. This introduction to June Carter is really incredible. I love being able to see evidence of a brush being used to ink. That's really clear from the varying weight of the line in her hair here. And finally, this series of panels stick out to me where Johnny thinks I'm coming home while exiting a dark place, literally, and entering a scene that is vibrant and green. Now, one thing that is pretty hard to deny after looking at a few of those panels is this. The artwork is incredible. I noticed that the art was signed by a guy named Al Hartley and thought I'd take a dive into his bio. Al Hartley was an American comic book writer born in 1921 in New Jersey. Al is best known for his work on Archie Comics as well as Atlas Comics, which was the predecessor for Marvel Comics in the 1950s. During the Silver Age of comic books in the 1960s, Al did a mix of work for Marvel, including serving as an assistant to Stan Lee for two months. Later on in the 60s, two interesting things happened to Al. He found himself drawing nude secret agent type stories for a feature that was called Pussycat, which ran in some of Marvel's men's magazines. And he became a born again Christian. That the power of Christ compels you! This development in his spiritual life led him to quit drawing nudie comics and go all in on the Christian comic genre. He began integrating his Christian beliefs into his work on Archie, but at some point his publisher thought it was a bit much and he was asked to cut back. However, people were starting to come around to Al's desire to slip the word of the Lord into speech bubbles, and he got some freelance gigs adapting Christian books into comics from publisher Fleming H. Revel. This apparently inspired Al to help launch Spire Christian Comics. He even got Archie's president to allow him to use the familiar Archie characters in many of the stories, and Spire went on to release 59 comics. Apparently these comics were quite ubiquitous. Here's a stack of these from my own collection. The Hiding Place, Time to Run, In His Steps, On the Road with Andre Crouch, Alpha and Omega, Paul, Close Encounters of a Real Kind, Two Issues of Adventure with the Brothers, 
hang in there and the cult escape. And we have my personal favorite, Jesus, where we follow the young man from Nazareth through the growth of his influence, the Last Supper, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Spire ultimately went out of print in 1988. Today, very few hold much value, though one title, Hansa, is quite sought after due to its controversial cover art and provocative title. If you're lucky, you can still find some of these in the dollar bin of your comic book shop. They're also widely available on eBay for reasonable prices. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What do you think of this art? Have you ever come across Christian comics before? And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.